You guys know that I don't usually mention the names of people, institutions, or companies in my videos. And that's for two reasons, one of which is better than the other. The first is that including these specifics don't really help me tell a story, but they do introduce the possibility of making someone upset. After all, no one likes getting called out. The second is that I don't want to reveal any personal information so you guys can find out where I live and dox me into oblivion. It's up to you to decide which one of those is more relevant than the other. Anyway, I'm going to make an exception to that rule for this video because I think it's particularly important that everybody knows just how terrible College Board is. Think about it. They're a monopoly that makes money exclusively off of exploiting misled children. They make tests that aren't actually indicative of academic achievement and then sell them by the millions because they're a necessary part of college admissions. And the tests themselves, they might as well have been written and organized by a lobotomized orangutan snorting crack and bashing his head into a typewriter. For example, the length of your SAT essay is actually a better indicator of your score than its actual content. In addition, College Board regularly administers tests that have been leaked and available for years, indicating that they're either too stupid to Google leaked SAT exams and look to see what's up there, or they're too lazy to write a new test to replace the leaked one, so they just recurve the test and screw over all the kids who took it. I know test proctors aren't technically affiliated with College Board, but there should at least be limits on what they can do when they're in the testing room. I've had a proctor who spent the entire test watching Netflix without earbuds, and another who brought his Nintendo Switch and played Mario Kart with the volume on. This is supposed to be the most important test of our lives, according to College Board, and they can't even bother to pretend to care enough to either create, administer, or grade it properly. Anybody with a two-digit or higher IQ, so obviously no one that works at College Board, should be able to see that the only thing College Board cares about is making money. Not the students taking it, not the integrity of the test they administer, and not even basic human morality that says you shouldn't prey on children. You want to know another fun fact? The SAT had its origins in a test that was meant to prove that minority groups were genetically too stupid to be educated. Here's a direct quote from Michael Brigham, the creator of the SAT. The army mental tests, which were tests he helped design, had proven beyond any scientific doubt that, like the American Negroes, apologies for the language, the Italians and the Jews were genetically ineducable. It would be a waste of good money even to attempt to try to give these born morons and imbeciles a good Anglo-Saxon education, let alone admit them to, into our fine medical, law, and engineering graduate schools. He also said that the reason he designed these tests was to prevent, and this is a direct quote again, the continued propagation of defective strains in the present population, otherwise known as, again his words, the infiltration of white blood into the Negro. And apologies for the language again. Not the nicest guy, if you ask me. Look, I know the SAT today isn't the same one that Brigham created, but it's not like the College Board has even bothered to address the fact that the SAT had its origins in a white supremacist movement. This passiveness is still morally degenerate, perhaps more so than if they were actually anti-minority. So I'm still going to give them flack for it. So where do I fit into all of this? After all, this channel is called Storytime with Jeff and not let's listen to Jeff rant for five minutes about something he's angry about. Well, I'm sorry to report that I've actually helped enable College Board by giving them more than $1,000 for AP and SAT testing. I sincerely believe that these exams were the only way I could get into a good college and so I bought into this horrible business model, becoming yet another pawn in their massive game of immoral chess. A few years ago, however, I realized the error in my ways and started my own campaign against the tyrant that is College Board. One of their claims I took particular issue with was the fact that they're technically a 501c3 nonprofit, just like the Red Cross, and yet they made 900 million and paid their CEO 1.455 million in 2016. After seeing this horror for myself, I took to Twitter and, as soon as College Board made a tweet, I was there to reply, asking them why they made $900 million a year, in spite of the fact that they were a nonprofit. This crusade was short-lived, however, because just two days after I started responding to College Board tweets, I got IP banned from Twitter and had my account deleted without warning. When I went to log into my account, it said that it didn't exist. Even searching my account name on Google turned up no results. Nothing in my email gave an explanation for why my Twitter had been deleted or even told me that it had disappeared. I had never had any strikes against me before. My Twitter had actually been pretty inactive until I started responding to College Board. So this was the only possible reason for the ban, as crappy and corrupt a reason as it was. It was as if my Twitter had not only ceased to exist, but all traces of it had been completely wiped off the face of the earth for good. The moral of the story is... Don't support College Board if you want to have a clean conscience.
On the other hand, you could totally support me and give me all the money you would have paid for SATs to my Venmo. Or you could just like and sub.